Hey, how's it going? It's Joseph here. I want to go over a simple scene, how to model one inside of SketchUp and then V-Ray to render it and then do a post-production with Photoshop. And it's going to be a quick and simple video. So please follow along and final result is going to look something like this. And then let's get to it. So I'm just going to upload this file onto 3D Warehouse so you can just follow the link on the description to download the model that's sort of set up for you to render and follow along. Once you open the model, it's going to look something like this. Um, there's a scene that's been set up at that specific angle. If you look around, it's just roughly about 10 meter by 10 meter room with some skylight to create a pattern on the shadow so if you just turn on the shadow you'll see that how it just casts shadow such way you can change the shadow if you would like but that's how I have set up so I'm just gonna go back and the shadow should be turned off but showing this specific angle so we need to model the tiles and I'm just gonna zoom out slightly and use a rectangle tool R for short and then the tile size that we are going to use is 50 by 250 mil. So 50 comma 250, enter, and you should have a tile. I'm just gonna push pull, P for push pull up, five mil, enter. And then use selection tool, space bar, triple click, and then right click to make component. I'm just gonna call it tile, zero one, create. And once you have done that, I should be able to go to Q for rotate tool and just target the end point there. And if you hit control key, it will be a toggling on copy function. So toggle that on, click here, click down here, and then move up. You can type in 90 degrees or just kind of snap onto that point and you should have that. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate 45 degrees so that all the chevron patterns are going to run down the room. Select both of them and hit Q to rotate and then just click there and then move down this way in 45, enter and then M for move again, double on copy, hit this endpoint here and then down this way, click and then I'm just going to type in something like 50X and hit enter and that's just gonna array that down. So highlight those and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna target this down along green axis, hold down shift key and then you can just target that back wall or just kind of orbit around and then hold down shift key again to lock onto green axis and hover over the surface. It should be able to just kind of move that way. And same thing, sort of the inner endpoint there, move along red axis, hold down shift key to lock and then just hover over and you should be able to just get into that wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna array that way. So use one of the endpoints here, toggle on copy, click and then just move down that way and then just hit click. And then I'm just gonna type in 50X, enter. And that should just kind of reach the end as well. And I probably have gone too far. So what I'm going to do is 30X, enter. That's still too much, 28X, enter, 25X, enter. Right, that's good. So notice how I didn't undo, I just typed in the numbers again. So that's very useful. So again, select it like that. And the reason why I have done it that way is because so I can select everything. K to just kind of show the back edges. So select everything. M for move again, just go down this way. And then because we cannot really target the very end, if you wish to, what you can do is hit K again. M for move and just find that very end and just toggle on the copy and then move down green axis, hold down shift key to lock and just find that end point, click. And once you have done that, I just need that repeated once more. So I'm just gonna type in 2X, enter. I just need this furniture to be resting comfortably on top of this tile. I'm just gonna move that up along blue axis, hold down shift key so that you're just moving up and just highlight the underneath. 
click and then move down again hold down shift key and just hover over the surface on the tile then you should be able to just kind of rest that directly on top of the tile and what I'm going to do is model the grout line just double click on one of these tiles use offset I have O for short key this is a custom short key so you can just go to tools offset and then just highlight the surface click and then inside and you can just type in say one mil one enter if that's too small then you can just type in two enter and then there you go you have two mil of a grout so total of four mil that may be a bit too thick and so I'm just gonna do undo and then offset again of one mil so total of two mil, and I think that's much better. And use P for push pull, and then just push that down of say two mil to enter. And then come out, and then you have all of these tiles. So I want all of these tiles to be in one group. So just kind of look at it this like that, and then just use selection tool to select that. If you have accidentally selected that furniture as well, just hold down shift key and then deselect that and then right click to make group and then all of those tiles should belong to one single group and if I just double click this to go in I don't want to see everything else so what I'm gonna do is view component edit hide rest of the model I have H as a shortcut and if I do that everything should go away we're gonna use the extension to randomize selection. There are two different plugins that's available from two different sources. The first one is called Random Select by TIG. If you go to Sketch Education website, you can just register and it's free. And then you can just log in to go on to plugin store and just type in random. And once you do that, then you should be able to find TIG Random Select and this should become download once you have logged in or you can also go to window extension warehouse and then you can also type in random and then there is any row of random selection and once that shows up you can just click on that and then install and then once that finishes yes then that should be ready for you you can use any of those two to get the same result but the process is slightly different select everything and then extensions random select and then I can just type in the amount that I want and hit OK. Or if I want to use the random selection from any row, and I can just go there and then just use a slide bar and it's just going to give me that specific selection depending on where this bar is. So there are three variations of the tiles. The first one is dark gray or black, and then it will be the light gray, and then it will be white. So the first one that I want to do is white. I just go to material dialog and just click on default, and then just click on that to create material. And I'm just gonna say white tile, zero one, and it's gonna be completely white, okay. And then just apply that onto the selection. All of them have become the white tile. And off of that extension, and I can just go to any row, random selection, and then just lower this bar to somewhere about there so that two thirds of it is still being selected. And just X that, and then just use this dialog again, create material, and I'm just gonna say, light gray zero one and just have about light gray color okay and then just go into this make sure i hit the selected tile and there you go and i want half of the two-third and extensions again any row random selection and just lower that bar onto somewhere there and then default again create material and just gonna say dark tile Zero one, and then not completely black, but somewhere a bit dark. Okay, and just go zoom into the highlighted area and hit that color. So I should have a three variation sort of randomized in here. And obviously there's some areas that really just kind of pops out on you. Then you can just do a white tile maybe, go over that. So you might be able to just kind of patch up if you may. 
And in this overall, if you want to add a little bit of variation in color, you can do that as well. But that's now finished with random variation. Click on that scene again so I can go back. And here some of the areas seems quite repeated. So double click on that. If I zoom in, I should be able to target a bit better. So um, just go in that and then just perhaps add some dark colors here and there as well as white. Just so that good enough to get your scene looking good. Okay, and then just click outside or hit escape to come out. So this is a scene that's ready. If I hit shadow, you should kind of get nice shadow down that way as well as some shadows here. I'm just gonna disable that again. So let's get it rendering. First of all, everything should have been reset. If you're just starting from some other project, then you can just hit V-Ray tools and wipe V-Ray data from the project so everyone is starting from fresh. And once you have done that, you can just hit this asset editor. And once the asset editor shows up, I'm just gonna hit the settings. And then from the render output, I'm just gonna immediately change that to something like 1920. The next number should become 1080. And everything else just sort of follows what I have done in a previous video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you can just find the link that shows above somewhere here. Um, save image, just turn that on, and I'm just gonna target somewhere on the desktop and just say tile 01, that's good. Save, when it finishes rendering, it's just gonna save there. And then also just make sure that your render element, your denoiser is turned on. So once you do that, the render element denoiser should come up and that's it. And I can just hit render and see what that looks like. So I have hit render and just sort of validated the scene. One thing that I did notice was that I forgot to color in the grout line as well as my shadow is a bit too strong. So we're gonna address that. The benefit of progressive render is this where you can just kind of validate the scene very quickly although it is quite noisy. I can see what's going on in the scene. So first of all I'm just gonna go back, just close that out. I'm just gonna go back inside here and just create a new material that's sort of a dark color, okay. And I'm just gonna name that grout. Zero one. And then just kind of zoom in to select the tile. Actually, it's easier on the white one because you can just kind of see what's going on. Use that material and apply onto the grout itself. Therefore, you should see more or less the lines everywhere. So there you go. Go back. And also we needed to address the shadow that was being too strong. So if you go to asset editor again, and then the lights. So the sunlight size multiplier, if you just up that to 10, the edges of the shadow should be a bit more blurred. And once you have done that, render with V-Ray. I'm just gonna hit render again. Depending on how powerful your machine is, this process can actually take a while. So you can just go to bathroom, toilet break, get a coffee, or just talk to your friends, make a call, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna come back. By the way, if this takes just way too long, then you can just lower the output, then it should just kind of finish very quickly. For this specific video, I'm just gonna use 1080p, but um, I just wanted to let you know. Had some coffee there. It is just finishing up now. And actually you can tell by just looking at here, um, once that progress bar finishes and it should say finished right there. So once that's finished, I can just kind of go to my desktop. So here are three results. If I just double click on this PNG file, you'll notice some noises that are present in some shadowed area. You may zoom in just kind of in those area and you'll see the noises. 
and the next one would be the denoiser and that should kind of clear up I don't know if you can see on your screen but you'll see that the noises are significantly better on either the denoiser or effects result effects result is basically combining the results and making into a one file so and this should be the one that you're using so I'm fine with this so I'm just gonna X out and start off Photoshop So from your desktop, I can just bring in this, the tile 01 effects result. I can just drag that onto Photoshop and it should just kind of open. One tip here is actually to go back and drag that in again onto the file. And what it does is that I can actually line that up and then hit enter. And the difference is the one that I just brought in and came in as a smart layer. So what I can do is if I wish to change something, I can just render that scene up again inside of SketchUp, say change the location of this furniture, or change the tone on the tile, or one specific tile I wanted to change to something else, I can do that and render again. And what I can do is go back to Photoshop and right click and replace contents to that specific scene then you should be able to pick up that one so I'm just gonna hit delete for that layer zero so the first thing that I'm going to do is go to filter and camera raw filter the reason why I do this is because I'm just using a little bit of photography so I'm just gonna use similar methods in the photography workflow into the rendering so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go onto this white balance tool and just click on this gray to get overall white balancing so that this is appearing of a shade of a gray rather than one specific color and that should be dialed in I can also hit auto to just kind of let Photoshop judge what my picture supposed to look like and just use your creativeness to get your photo right um, I'm just gonna lower the black slightly to get a little bit more contrast and if you want to see what previous it was if you just hit P and then you should see what it was go back to with the adjustment values so exposure is fine I'm just gonna lower that slightly one thing that I have done is actually lower the clarity and if I lower the clarity you get kind of this bloom effect on the highlighted area and I kind of like that for getting the mood right so I can just lower that slightly to get that effect and also one thing I'm gonna do is go to lens corrections and I'm just gonna put in vignetting I rely on vignette quite a lot I just kind of increase that to just darken the edges so all of your focus is to the middle of the image I'm thinking that's a bit too washed out there so go back and just push back the clarity again okay I'm fine with that so all of that should be applied at that point what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and then convert to smart object the reason why I do this is because I want to nest the sequence again and go to filter and another thing that I do is blur Gaussian blur and the dialog should pop up and I'm just going to type in maybe one that's too little two mm, maybe three okay yes it has sort of blurred the entire scene that's not necessarily what I want so go and highlight this mask here Control I to invert into black and use your brush B for short and make sure you got white and black there and use the bracket keys to change the size or you can just go up here and then change the size to say something like that and lower the hardness all the way down and then I'm just going to use brackets to kind of make that bigger and the areas that I want to make out of focus effect I just can just just kind of paint over those areas I kept my opacity of brush about 30 percent and as you draw these brushes strokes um, you should kind of see the changes on your mask so maybe there a little bit on the edges the further end should be more out of focus so just cover that up a little bit and then there's not really a guideline to this you can just use your creativeness and just normal workflow that you do to your photography stylizing this or maybe put some gradient map on top of it so you can just kind of get the teal and orange look Instagram filter if you would like and there you go there's the final image and then I'm just gonna use that as my thumbnail
So that was sort of everything from modeling, rendering, and a little bit of post-production. Focus on what's in your mind. What am I trying to show? This one I wanted to show sort of the black and white and light gray randomized tiles on my scene and that's all I'm focusing. I'm not trying to tweak little tiny values here and there to get your rendering right or add more stuff on Photoshop. I hope this was useful for you. If you liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep watching these type of videos and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.